Hi, my name is Stephen and today we're looking at Philippians chapter 2 and verse 16. It's part of a section in Philippians where Paul is telling the church in Philippi to work out their salvation with fear and trembling. And uh, he's been unpacking that in, in various ways uh, through various phrases over the last we have been unpacking them in various ways over the last few days, including not sinning and uh, in terms of not moaning and complaining, uh, looking at the fact that we're meant to shine like stars, uh, like, like light in the world to those around us. And uh, here today he's talking about getting uh, into the scriptures. Uh, he says this, holding fast to the word of life so that in the day of Christ, I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. Paul is eager that these disciples are ones that are well rooted uh, in Christ and in his teaching. And uh, so when he looks back over his life, his great journey of his life, he can say, I didn't suffer in vain. I didn't preach. I didn't teach in vain. It wasn't for naught. It was worth something and because something lasting was left in these other believers. And we can spend a lot of time unpicking that. But I just want to go back to that beginning phrase, holding fast to the word of life. How do we become the disciples that Paul was so desperate to produce? How do we become the kind of disciples uh, that Jesus was trying to leave here on earth? Well, Jesus said, if you love me, you're those who obey my commands, obey my teaching, know it and love it. And uh, so we're to, be, we're to be like that. We're to be those who hold on to the word of God. Another in Psalm 1, it talks about those who meditate upon the law of God day and night are like trees planted by flowing waters uh, where that tree's uh, leaves don't wither, uh, even in difficult seasons. Actually, there's bearing fruit. And if we were to be those who bear fruit in every area of our life, to have God's life coursing through our veins, when we need those who've got the word of God brought alive by the, his Holy Spirit as we read it each day, uh, as we meditate on it throughout the day and throughout the night, and uh, to be those who just allow the word of God to shape us shape our thinking, shape the way we feel, shape the way we act, uh, the way we love God and the way we love others as well. And uh, we'll be those who hold on to it. It's not just something that sits on the periphery of our relationship with God. It's right center to it. We know that it's, uh, Paul says elsewhere to Timothy uh, that the word of God is useful for all kinds of things, rebuking, for teaching and uh, for building up and it's like this multi-tool, like a pen knife, taking it apart. There's lots of, different, lots of different things, every area of our lives. And uh, all the time looking, what does it say about God? And what does it say about uh, the wonderful message of salvation that he's brought to bear in our lives? So as believers, we want to be those who don't just pick it up occasionally. We don't, don't just want to be those who hear it on the Sunday, but those who are self-feeders, dig into ourselves, feast upon it uh, for ourselves. And in one sense, I'm preaching to the choir. Whereas if you are watching a devotional about the Bible, there is already a sense in you where you know you need more of the word of God and you need more of it unpacked uh, for you. So well done. Uh, but let me encourage you, go even further. Uh, keep making sure reading your, the Bible is just central to who you are, to your rhythms of the day. If you put your clothes on the morning, well, you've got time to open up a verse as well. And uh, you wouldn't leave the house without your clothes on. Let me encourage you, don't leave the house without having the word of God in you as well. And we need to be those who don't just hold on to it, but hold on to it tightly and fast and grip it and dig deep into it. And what does it mean? What does it say about God? I've been kicking around long enough uh, to unfortunately see people backslide from the Christian faith or deconstruct their faith. And often be those who have been tempted by things in the world or in their flesh or by the devil and uh, drawn away from the word of God, haven't held it tightly, haven't allowed it to permeate all their uh, being really and their soul and their th thinking and so we need to be those who don't just kind of uh, have a cursory uh, glance at the word of God but really let it impact our lives that's why we encourage people to do things like uh, thrive story taking the gospel and letting it uh, kind of be applied to every area of our lives or thrive study digging deeper into some books of the bible that's why we set up Emmanuel Institute because we want to be a uh, people who are built upon the word of God let me encourage you uh, make that your aim in life. So I want to know more of Jesus. How can I know him? Well, I can read his word and let it get right into the very depths of me. Why don't you make that, pray, make that your prayer today? That you might be one who's rooted and established in the word of God. And that as you read it each day, that you might pray the Holy Spirit helps you to see more of Jesus as you do so. 
so that Paul's running may not be in vain. And uh, we as elders, as we pray for you, our, our labouring for you may not be in vain because you take it seriously as well. You work out uh, your salvation with uh, genuine, rev- genuine reverence to God and his word as well. Uh, bless you as you have your day and I'll see you again tomorrow.